this project is really about showing the benefits and validating cellular communication technologies in space and specifically on the moon. NASA is very interested in exploring the technologies that we use in terrestrial networks, in enterprise consumer networks, and that they use every day in their non-professional lives or non-space lives. Uh, use those same technologies, leverage all the investments that go into those technologies and use them in space as well. Most of the communication technologies that are used in space, whether it's the International Space Station or on the moon, are really proprietary technologies, some derived from military technologies, some still from the 70s, 80s, early 90s, and then they start to use Wi-Fi. But they also recognize all the capabilities that are coming from the ecosystem and the investments in the cellular technologies, whether it's 4G and then going into 5G. And they were really trying to validate those technologies. And so we've been very fortunate to have been selected by NASA as part of that tipping point program, which is really trying to validate advanced technologies for future applications. And they were already looking at LTE. And so we were at the right time at the right place with our proposal. And so the goal is really to validate it and increase the technology readiness level of cellular communication for space applications. They're running more advanced applications. They have greater needs for video. They have greater needs for robotic control. They have more sensors, more devices, more things that get connected in the networks. And the demands from the applications are just greater. Well, I think the, the main advantage is really improved throughput, improved latency, and the cellular technologies are really the most advanced communication technologies that we have and that we've invented. And they would benefit as they go back to the moon, go into Mars, as well as on the International Space Station. They really want to have the capabilities that we have on Earth in space to run all these advanced applications, whether it's video, whether it's telemetry, whether it's sensing applications, whether it's robotic control applications. They really need these advanced communication capabilities. And at the same time, they can benefit from the investment that's made in those technologies. So they don't have to reinvent the wheel in some sense and invest in their own technologies when the technologies that have been developed by the telecom industry can be leveraged and can be reused and can be hardened for the space applications. It's a much better reuse of the most advanced capabilities. Our goal is to deliver a fully integrated, very compact LTE network that has multiple parts to it. There is a part that is the base station and core network functionality. It's integrated in a very small, compact form factor that will go on the lunar lander that Intuitive Machines, our partner for this mission, is building. And so our LTE network equipment will go on the lunar lander. We also develop an antenna system that will go on the lunar lander. And then we have user equipment. So that's the equivalent of phones, essentially. The, the LTE UEs will go on a rover that will be deployed by the lunar lander. We also develop the user equipment that will go on the rover. We built the antenna system that will go on the rover. And then the LTE link is established between the lander and the rover that will then have two missions. One is very close proximity to the lander, just a couple hundred meters, and the longer range mission, which will be up to uh, two to three kilometers driving away from the lander. And then we also built operations and maintenance software so that the whole system can be monitored from mission control on Earth. It will be configured when the lander lands on the moon. The network will be automatically set up. And then, as I said, the operations maintenance software from, from, from our side allows us to control and monitor and remotely diagnose and configure the software if there's any changes. So we will have control of the network equipment from Earth. And then the rovers will be automatically deployed from the lander and establish the connection back to the lander as they are driving around. In some sense, we know how to remotely deploy and control network equipment. We do that every day when we deploy networks for our customers, whether it's service providers or enterprise. We generally have capabilities to remotely monitor and understand the network behavior, the performance of it, configure it remotely and so forth. So we do have those capabilities. I think the challenge here really is that it's very far away and there is no backup plan of sending somebody to go and push a reboot button if you absolutely have to do that. But in terms of the framework of remotely monitoring and controlling networks, we do have that, and we do that every day for our customers. When we're talking about extreme temperatures, we're talking about radiation, we're talking about operation in vacuum. There's a lot of work that we have already done in the last couple of years and that we 
need to continue to do so that the equipment is ready to support the extreme environment of the launch, the landing, and the operation on the moon. It's an LTE system. And one of the objectives for us is to reuse as much as possible commercial off-the-shelf technology and show that all the investment that went into that can be reused. And there is a hardening part, but you don't have to go back to a blank piece of paper and start from scratch. If you look at some of the extreme industrial environments, whether it's mining operations, or you think about offshore drilling platforms, I think in any of these harsh environments where you're remote and the equipment has to operate in very different environmental conditions, whether it's temperature, humidity, dust, exposure to all kinds of environmental particles and so forth. I think mining, offshore drilling, um, very remote areas, I think that's where probably the equipment is most applicable and also environments where your space and size constraint, space, I mean like physical footprint, because sometimes you don't have a lot of space to transport the equipment there. You don't have a lot of space where you can mount the equipment. You're constrained by power, the availability of power. So anytime you have space, size, weight, power constraints, as well as in the harsh industrial environmental conditions. I'm a space geek. I remember my first experience with space was um, April 81, when the first space shuttle launched, uh, I was quite young, but that's when I first got interested in space. And I don't think I would pass the astronaut test. So to me, this is the best way that I can contribute what I do every day to space. But yeah, absolutely doing something for space has always been a dream. Never seen a space shuttle launch. Uh, I've seen some landings, but yeah, absolutely fantastic to be associated with something around space. The only thing to top it would be if I could use the equipment myself in space, but I don't think that's gonna happen. I'm not really scared. I think I'm trying to be rational about. I think I want to make sure that we think everything through. I don't want to have any regrets about the project. I want to really make sure we plan seriously. We test as much as we can. We validate. We look at everything transparently. And we don't want to have regrets later that we should have done this other test or we saw test results that didn't match our expectations and we didn't take the results seriously. So that's the main part for me. I think it's risky. I'm very confident we can do this, but I just don't want to have any regrets. Uh, it's maybe the biggest fear I have is that we're missing something or we're not taking something seriously, that the indicators were there, but we didn't really pay attention to them. This is how we demonstrate that we're able to solve the hardest problems. And if we can solve problems to put a network on the moon and have it operate on the moon, we can solve any problem on Earth. And if I can build a network that operates on the moon, I can build a network that works in any environment for our CSP and enterprise customers. And so taking these extreme perspectives, I think that's really in the DNA of Bell Labs, that we look at problems that are important for our everyday lives, but we want to take the extreme version of that problem. And if we solve that problem, we learn so much and then we apply that to the everyday usage. But taking the extreme version, I think, is how you demonstrate that you really understand the problem, you can really solve it, and then you derive the technologies from that. And this is how we differentiate, I think, from our competitors.